Life does not need to be limiting or limited. You aren't stuck in a location, in a job, in a relationship. Life's what you make of it. If you choose for dieting to be your main focus and spend all your time thinking about food and exercise and appearance, well, that's your life choice. If you choose for life to be more than that, well, that's your choice too. And that's where you can find meaning. Six or so years ago, I chose to recover from my eating disorder. I chose for life to be more than restriction and punishment and self-hatred. And since then, I've been on this road called self-discovery. But self-discovery, what does that even mean? Over the past two or three years, I've repeated this word to myself so many times it has basically lost any sense. Try it. Self-discovery, 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 self-discovery. Self-discovery is the process of acquiring insight into one's own character. As for me, this has, concretely, meant the following. 1. I changed jobs, from crazy hours and crazy pay healthcare to my dream employment, and then I quit that. 2. I opted for unemployment and homelessness over security, moving away from a lovely rented flat to living back with my parents, and from an incredible job to the insecurity of launching my own recovery coaching and my own recovery programs. Three, questioning everything. Yes, everything. Four, trying to discover my style and still very much failing. Five, practicing decision-making and still very much getting overwhelmed on the regular. Six, following my intuition and getting better at this every single day. I'm learning what is most important to me by opening up my world rather than closing it down and narrowing it off. I'm sticking my fingers into lots and lots of pies and I'm having a good old taste of them all. I am living and it's scary. Self-discovery is terrifying. What am I like? What do I want from life? What is the purpose of it all? I genuinely do not know. What I do know is that it is not an eating disorder. And I know it's not in the mainstream. Not for me anyway. I guess I'm on the journey of finding out what exactly it is. Through a process of elimination of sorts. My parents have been a big part of this. My friends and everyone I have met along the way have been a big part of this. And of course, my boyfriend too. It's been a complicated journey for the both of us. Tom and I have been together for five years now and he probably averages being in one of my videos about once a year. I'm wary of putting people on the spot, but equally I know that you guys love him. So he's back, upon popular request. Enjoy. I'm treating Tom to a little luxury breakfast in bed for a five year anniversary. I've got avocado toast, fresh orange juice, fruit, fresh chocolate croissants and I've also got some frozen chocolate bites. The wasp is loving it. To celebrate Tom being in another one of my videos, I've compiled a few of your questions which I figured we'd take a moment to answer now. So the first question is why are you vegan? I was always vegetarian. I was brought up vegetarian, so um, 
So it was always kind of an easy progression, but it was when I went to uni that um, I sort of questioned a bit more um, why I was vegetarian um, and did more research into like the dairy industry and problems with that and and the, yeah basically I needed to go vegan to align with my values and, and the sort of reasons that I said I was vegetarian. Similar to you I think it just aligned with me ethically and as we always cook together it was quite fun to try recipes together to eat together and it's just a really sociable thing as well so there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. Creating my own life. If only there was a manual for that. Or maybe a checklist. I guess if there was a checklist, mine would include work-life balance, passion, lots of it, intimacy and close relationships, and discovery. Then somewhere on that list would be chocolate and peanut butter, cycle rides, and each and every one of you too, of course. Following my passions and my intuition and my values has been a game changer. Making a difference, inspiring others, being vegan. These are all part of that equation too. Next question. Is your boyfriend fit? The answer is yes. He Physically is. or <laughs> in a sporting way or? Physically, but, mentally, psychologically. But, yeah. Any which way, yes. Having a support system and reaching out to my support system has been crucial. I would not have made it without my treatment team, without the support of my parents, without my sister. And even now I know I can reach out to them when I need to, which is all the freaking time for all the freaking little things that need to be sorted, processed and solved. Support is crucial, self-care is crucial, mindfulness is unmissable. These are all things I never really thought would matter as much as they genuinely do. And play. Another part of my journey has been play. Rediscovering play and fun and pleasure. Um, not in that way. Moving my body, going to the gym, just having fun. Life doesn't have to be all about work and all about finding a life purpose. Balance is at least as important as that. I love having things to look forward to and I know there's always something to look forward to. There's always something planned, something to keep me excited for the future. So yeah, if you choose dieting to be your main focus and spend all your time thinking about food and exercise and appearance, that is your choice. But I promise that life can be a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more rewarding when you allow yourself the foods you enjoy and crave, when you count memories and not calories, and when you feel energized and sexy and healthy over tired and weak. The only way to find out for yourself is by jumping in the deep end, going for it, experiencing it. I don't think I could have started this journey if my thoughts had remained on this one track mind. In that sense, recovery has been the hardest and yet the most rewarding choice I have ever made on this road of self-discovery. And yes, I gained weight. I also gained a whole lot more than that. Remember, other people don't care as much about your appearance as they do about their own appearance and the impressions that they make. And what matters more than any of these things is personality and vibe, the kind of thing that someone will actually remember about you. And guess what? For me personally, I found that my personality, my vibe, well, they only really emerged and became truly mine when I left my eating disorder behind, when I decided to live life, when I embraced it with open arms and stopped caring about what anyone else thought.
Question to you. Did you notice weight gain during Hannah's recovery and did you care? I think you were definitely skinnier when we met. But, um, I don't know, it wasn't a big kind of focal point, I guess. Tom, did you ever notice disordered or weird food habits when you first met? No, I, I thought we were quite similar in that we both ate really weird things because being vegan is, was, was seen probably less so now as being quite weird so um, we just had a lot of variety. Yeah, it's never been driven by any kind of eating disorder reasoning. Someone said love you. <laughs> I don't know if they're saying at me or at you but well, it's, yeah. it's been highly requested that you come onto my channel again so <laughs> I choose food freedom and the body this comes with over any other body and any other life. The version of you that society has moulded you into and that experiences have moulded you into may be all you know right now. But is that really you? I personally don't really know what I am or who I want to be and that knowledge is scary. And super anxiety inducing sometimes but it's all part of that journey it's once you realize that this is a journey change is possible and you can learn that you can genuinely make any progress for too long i just stuck with what i knew and trusted in spite of it not bringing me any joy but guess what joy and freedom and discovery are all on the other side of that comfort zone and you need to make your way out to find your way in. I realise that that sentence barely makes any sense, but it's as easy and as difficult as that. This one's aimed at me. Do you feel safe to share all your thoughts with Tom? Um, yes, again. I don't always understand everything that's going on in here. Um, I try to, to the best of my ability, and to share that with you, I think. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Would you agree? Yeah. 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 I think it's really important to be open with each other about yeah. what we enjoy or what's not going as well or just everything because it does create that emotional intimacy. So I think there's times where things come out and they don't always necessarily like come out straight away, but it's like um yeah, it's just when we sort of have a moment to catch up and chat properly. But, yeah, so you share things more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I guess I need a moment to make sense of things myself a little bit or to create a little bit of distance between myself and the event or the emotion. Um, yeah. So how has Tom supported me through my struggles and how has he looked after himself? I can answer the first part, you answer the second. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we met sort of after my recovery, I would say. So I wasn't actively struggling to stick to a meal plan or gain weight or battle those disordered thoughts to the same extent that I had been for the five or six years prior. Um, Though when we met, it, you know, it was still fairly recent as well. So it was a bit of a strange time. My body confidence was quite low. I still wanted to gain some weight. Um, I was getting used to university life and living on my own and all of that. So in terms of that, he was just a great support. Just always there to listen to me. And if I was struggling, just to be there. So not even in terms of conversations, but even just be there, like, to give me a big hug and say that everything be alright, and, um, yeah, that's, I don't know, it's underestimated, like, how important that really is, I think. And how have you looked after yourself? Um, I looked after myself. I don't know, I've always been quite into personal development stuff, so I watch lots of YouTube videos and... Um, listen to podcasts and things like that on um, just like psychology type things um, 
So I don't think much has changed from my side from when we met. I've just kind of kept up good habits and uh, yeah, just trying to be stable. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you can't really look after someone if you've got too many of your own things on your mind as well. So making sure you find that balance and be there for someone else, but yeah. be there for but, yourself. Yeah, everyone has ups and downs. So like Anna's there for me when I'm down and vice versa. So. Yeah, definitely. In the end, it's all about trial and error and not eating and stress eating and bawling your eyes out and singing with joy. It took me years to realize that my eating disorder wasn't me just a way to cope with it all and it was time to manage my coping mechanisms find new ways learn from what i knew but don't but don't use that as an excuse just to stick with it whatever seems unsafe to you right now may seem scary and new but i guess unsafe more often than not really is just that scary and new and not actually dangerous at all and if it isn't gonna kill me surely it's worth a try can you each give each other a compliment it can be personality or appearance or both do you want to start or shall i the most important one probably for me is that you're always there for other people not just me and you really listen to people you're not just there giving advice you're there to take in what someone else has to say and yeah i really value that just kind of really proud of what you've achieved with everything that you're doing with the channel and your coaching and your new uh, program and everything like that it's just like really good to see that you're enjoying what you're doing and doing yeah like giving back and doing something that helps people and yeah I think it all comes down to like the similar values you have isn't it like yeah we're just yeah we, we have we have similar goals of sort of wanting to yeah just wanting to do good in the world I guess when are you finally getting engaged? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I always had in mind when, um, like before I was in a relationship, I always thought kind of like the five year mark was a good, a good mark, but we, we've got that coming up in a few days and we're not getting engaged just yet. So. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's because we've always got so many exciting things coming up in terms of we had a little apartment together, well, rented a little apartment together, and now we're doing some traveling. We're going to be moving abroad for a bit. So there's always so much to look forward to. Um, that so we've been keeping busy. There's a lot in our life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when things get boring, that's when we'll get engaged, basically. <laughs> Yes, I'm a work in progress and maybe I'll never be a final draft. Maybe I shouldn't be seeking to be a final draft. Maybe all that matters is the progress and the things that take place along the way. If you feel lost right now, you're already on that journey. Take the pressure off. You too will get there. Love you, bye.